everyone. This is the Committee on Rules, Monday, March the 27th of 2023. I understand that state law currently requires that the following announcement be made at the beginning of every remote public hearing as follows. Due to the current public health emergency, city council committees are currently meeting remotely. We are using Microsoft Teams to make these remote hearings possible. Instructions for how the public may view and offer public testimony at public hearings of council committees are included in the public hearing notices that are published in the Daily News, Enquirer, and Legal Intelligence prior to the hearings and can also be found on phlcouncil.com. Will a clerk please call the roll to take attendance? Members that are in attendance will please indicate they are present when their names are called. Also, pl please say a few brief words when responding so that your image will be displayed on the screen when you speak. Council member Cindy Bass. Good morning, Mr. Chairman and colleagues. I am present. Council member Catherine Gilmore Richardson. Good morning, Mr. Chair and colleagues. I am present. And council member Mark Squilla. Vice Chairman Squilla, are you there? I'm here. Yeah, I was trying to get off my uh, mute button there. Sorry, guys. Uh, Mr. President, okay. President, good to see you. Thank you. A quorum of the committee is present, and this hearing is now called to order. This is the public hearing of the Committee on Rules regarding bills numbers 220940, 230007, 230080, 230107, and 230132. Will the clerk please read the titles of the bills? Bill number 220940, a bill continuing the Roxborough Neighborhood Improvement District beyond its termination date in an area that generally includes both sides of Ridge Avenue from Main Street beginning with 5122 Ridge Avenue to 7220 Ridge Avenue and certain blocks of streets that intersect the portion of Ridge Avenue, continuing the designation of the Roxborough Development Corporation, a Pennsylvania nonprofit corporation, as the Neighborhood Improvement District Management Association for the district. Bill number 230007, amending section 14-513 of the Philadelphia Code entitled Transit Oriented Development Overlay Districts and amending section 14-533 of the Philadelphia Code entitled Mixed Income Neighborhoods Overlay District to expand the applicable areas of each district in the vicinity of Market Street between 54th Street and 63rd Street, all under certain terms and conditions. Bill number 230080, Continuing a neighborhood improvement district known as the Northern Liberties Business Improvement District in the area that generally includes both sides of North 2nd Street from the north side of Calla Hill Street to the south side of Girard Avenue, both sides of North 3rd Street from Spring Garden Street to south side of Wildly, Wildly Street, Spring Garden Street from North 2nd Street to eastern side of North Fish Street, and certain blocks of streets that intersect portions of these streets designating the Northern Liberties Business Improvement District, which has organized itself as a Pennsylvania nonprofit corporation as the Neighborhood Improvement District Management Association for the district. Bill number 230107, an ordinance to amend the Philadelphia zoning maps by changing the zoning designations of certain areas of land located within an area bounded by 63rd Street, Calla Hill Street, Felton Street, and Vine Street. And finally, Bill number 230132, an ordinance amending Chapter 14-600 of the Philadelphia Code to clarify that the sale of marijuana for recreational use is not included in the medical marijuana dispensary use category under certain terms and conditions. Thank you very much. Would a clerk please call the panel for the first bill? Uh, Council Member, or Ms. Mr. Chair, I believe there's still a portion you have to read. It sure is. Before we begin to hear testimony from the witnesses we have for the day, everyone who has been invited to the meeting to testify should be aware that this public hearing is being recorded. Because the hearing is public, participants and viewers have no reasonable expectation or, uh, of privacy. By continuing to be in the meeting, you are considering the being recorded. Additionally, prior to recognizing members for the questions or comments they have for witnesses, I will note for the record at this time that we will use the chat feature available at Microsoft Teams to allow members to signify that they will, will that they wish to be recognized in order to comply with the Sunshine Act. 
The chat feature must only be used for this purpose. Also, before we begin, I want to state for the record that bill number 230132 is being held at the request of the sponsor. Will the clerk please call the panel for bill number 230007? For 230007, we have Paula Brumbla Burns. Good morning. Good morning, Paula. Just state your name and your title for the record to begin your testimony, please. Um, sorry, I just shrunk my visual screen for just a moment. Okay. I'm getting old. I cannot read that small. So good morning, members of the Rules Committee. I'm Paula Brumblo Burns, Director of Legislation for the Philadelphia City Planning Commission. I am here to testify on Bill number 230007, introduced into City Council on January 19th, 2023, by Council Member Gautier. Bill number 230007 amends section 14-513 of the Philadelphia Zoning Code entitled TOD, Transit Oriented Development Overlay District, and amends section 14-433 entitled Mixed Income Neighborhoods Overlay District, otherwise known as MIN to expand the applicable areas of each district in the vicinity of Market Street between 54th and 63rd Streets. This bill expands the existing MIN Mixed Income Neighborhoods Overlay District to include the area west of 54th Street to 63rd Street between Chestnut and Arch Streets. One notable requirement is that 20% of all new residential units shall be provided and maintained as affordable on-site units. Bill number 230007 also designates three stations on the Market Frankfurt line as part of the transit oriented development overlay. The stations are 56th Street Station, 60th Street Station, and 63rd Street Station. The overlay will cover all lots that lie partly or entirely within 500 feet of an exit or entrance of these stations. The TOD overlay includes provisions intended to encourage a mix of increasing increased moderate density development that is more pedestrian friendly within walking distance of transit stations. The Philadelphia City Planning Commission considered bill number 230007 at its meeting on February 16th, 2023 and recommended the bill for approval. I'll be happy to answer any questions at this time. Any questions or comments from members of the committee? Mr. Chair? Uh, yes. My apologies. I'm trying to use the chat feature. I'm just having a little difficulty with teams this morning. Uh, but this is, <clears throat> pardon me, this is Council Member uh, Catherine Gilmore Richardson. And I just wanted to um, thank uh, the legislation sponsor, uh, Council Member uh, Gaudier, um, for this uh, TOD legislation. I worked on the original TOD uh, legislation. Uh, as a legislative aid in council. And so it's good to see um, that we're adding more uh, TOD uh, development uh, to the city. So thank you very, very much. Thank you very much. Um, just one quick question regarding the TOD um, for those designated areas. What's the density bonus? Because I know there's an incentive to build next to um, these transit stops, right? But what's the actual bonus and the incentive um, that's provided when individuals decide to build within 500 feet of a transit oriented site. Just wanted to know. I'm going to be honest, I do not have that off of the top of my head. I can get that to your office this afternoon. Okay. Yeah. No. You yeah, do no, get a little bit more density, a little bit more height, a reduction yes. in parking. I just don't know the numbers. Yeah, just want to get an idea of what that density looked like, um, as well as the height. Um, okay. and, and the parking. And so if you could provide that information, that would be helpful. Yeah, I apologize. I don't know that off the top of my head and I just blanked on that. So okay. I will send that to you this afternoon. Yeah. All right, thank you very much. Any other questions or comments of members of the committee? I'm, I'm hearing that. And one last thing also, with the density um, bonuses and the height, well, density and height is the same thing, but the bonuses obviously, which results in additional units, uh, will they still be required to do it affordable as well? So you get the additional density, but also you're still required to do the affordable as a part of the mixed income overlay. Yes, I know that answer okay. for sure. That is yes. All right, great, great. Thank you very much. Okay. Any other thank questions you. or comments from members of the committee? Hearing none, um, thank you for your testimony. Will the clerk please call the next panel for bill number... 
I think my eyes too. Second. 230107 should be the next one. And it is again, uh, Mrs. Paula Brumbler Burns. Thank you, Paula. Can you please yeah. state your name for the record and begin your testimony? I am Paula Brumbler Burns, Director of Legislation for the Philadelphia City Planning Commission. I am here to testify on Bill number 230107 introduced into City Council on February 16th, 2023 by Council Member Curtis Jones Jr. Bill number 230107 amends the Philadelphia zoning maps by changing the zoning of two properties bounded by 63rd, Callow Hill, Felton and Vine Streets. This bill will change the zoning of two properties from RM1, residential multifamily, to special purpose, civic, educational and medical SP Civ zoning district. This request came from the Boys Ladin of Philadelphia Charter School to bring their property into a more appropriate zoning district for the current use. The Philadelphia City Planning Commission considered Bill number 230107 at its meeting on March 16th, 2023 and recommended the bill for approval. I'll be happy to answer any questions at this time. Thank you very much. Any questions or comments from members of the committee? Okay. Hearing none, will the clerk please call the next bill and the next panel? The next bill uh, that we will be speaking on is bill number 230080, and we have Dennis Murphy followed by Christine Kennedy and William Reed in that order. Please state your name for the record and please begin your testimony. Good morning, Chairman Johnson. My name is Dennis Murphy. I'm a deputy director within the City Commerce Department. I'm here to testify in favor of bill number 230080, um, reauthorizing the Northern Liberties Business Improvement District. This legislation includes the Northern Liberties Plan for Services and would allow the bid to continue to levy assessment fees on property owners within the district. The fees fund a variety of vital services that keep the district inviting for shoppers, new businesses, and residents. The Northern Liberties bid launched in 2018, and it quickly began to do sidewalk cleaning. It organized street festivals, conducted marketing, um, and served the district that's primarily located along North 2nd Street from Callow Hill to Girard Avenue. These efforts fortified the district's reputation as a regional restaurant destination and a great place to live. In 2020, however, this reputation came into jeopardy with the extreme cha challenges of the pandemic. The bid responded swiftly by assisting businesses with access to business relief programs. They advocated for outdoor dining and supported and lended encouragement to their local businesses in a time of great uncertainty. Because of the bid, the Northern Liberties District has emerged from the pandemic resilient and it remains one of Philadelphia's great commercial districts. Besides addressing the district's immediate needs in the five years since it started, the bid has also worked closely with the community to lay out a long-term vision for North 2nd Street. We commend the Northern Liberties property owners, local businesses, and City Council for their ongoing support of the Northern Liberties Business Improvement District. Thank you for the opportunity to testify, and I'm happy to answer any questions you may have. Thank you very much. Any questions or comments from members of the committee? Hearing none, thank you very much for your testimony. Will the clerk please call the next bill and the... Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, I see Christine. I'm sorry, go ahead, Christine. And then after Christine, we'll have William Reed as well. Sorry. Thank you, and I wanna also acknowledge um, Councilman O'Neill for being present for the committee hearing. Christine Kennedy, you can go ahead and begin your testimony. Thank you very much. Uh, good morning, everybody. Uh, my name is Christine Kennedy. Uh, I'm the executive director of the Northern Liberties Business Improvement District. I'm here to speak about Bill 230080. Uh, so I've been a part of this organization since 2016, uh, when the businesses along the North 2nd Street Corridor had just begun to coalesce around creating a self-funded organization uh, to meet the area's many challenges. Uh, the NLBID encompasses the main commercial streets of Northern Liberties, uh, that includes North 2nd Street, five blocks of Spring Garden Street, a portion of North 3rd, 
and a portion of Gerard Avenue, um, as well as impacted cross streets. Um, there are 792 properties within our boundaries, many of which are, are owner occupied. Um, so that means that they don't, they don't pay our assessment, um, even though um, they are within our boundaries um, and they receive the benefits of our street cleaning and public safety initiatives. Um, our 200 businesses are largely locally owned micro enterprises with fewer than 50 employees. Um, not a week goes by when we don't assist these understaffed and really stressed out entrepreneurs um, as well as residents with everything from public safety concerns to accessing grants. Uh, we've gotten potholes filled, down tree limbs cleared, scratches buffed from storefront windows, um, sidewalks repaired, and, and so much more. Um, and each one of these things might go unnoticed by themselves, but it's their cumulative effect that really creates an environment for economic growth. All bids are created to respond to the unique challenges and also harness the unique qualities of the areas that they serve. When the NL bid was created, our programming and budget reflected the input of 331 people who completed a needs assessment survey and the residents, property owners, and business owners who served on our steering committee. Uh, we had only been in action for about a year and a half when uh, COVID profoundly redirected our resources. Uh, to help triage imploding businesses with PPP loan information and grant or streetery applications. Many of our initial goals, um, such as more fun events, had to be postponed. As we planned for our second five-year term, we again gathered input from a needs assessment survey, which considered the desires of 149 respondents. We also analyzed the past five years to see what had been a good use of our time and funds, what was most impactful, what did our constituents feel most strongly about. Um, it should be no surprise that the budget and the plan presented to City Council reflects a major shift towards cleaning and public safety. Five years ago, when this bid was first authorized, Northern Liberties was a hard sell. Many people weren't even sure where the neighborhood was, no less what we had to offer. Now I, I feel field enthusiastic calls from prospective tenants um, eager to find their forever home here. I see the streets and sidewalks markedly cleaner than those just outside of our boundaries. And businesses just five blocks away um, are asking how they can get included in our marketing efforts. Um, but there are still major challenges ahead. Northern Liberties is perhaps the city's fastest growing neighborhood. At just a little more than a half square mile, there are about 5,000 new housing units, that's apartments and single family residences, along with more than 150,000 square feet of new commercial space under construction or permitted. We expect our population to almost double from 9,800 to almost 18,000 in the next three years. Though the increase in density may be a boon for businesses who are not yet recovered from the pandemic, uh, it's going to put tremendous strain on um, our sidewalks, our streets, and our public right-of-way. Now more than ever, a professionalized organization dedicated to cultivating vibrancy and quality of life in Northern Liberties is needed. An entity with a seasoned and knowledgeable and dedicated staff that can guide and advocate for infrastructure and streetscape improvements is needed. Our bid is needed. Guided by a board of longtime residents and owners of beloved businesses, this organization is driven by what we can accomplish together as a community when we pool our resources. One of the most important aspects to having assessment revenue is our ability to raise money around it. Through grants, event revenue, and other streams, we've been able to bring in 26 cents for every dollar of assessment revenue. And as a participant in the CDC tax credit program, we'll be able to continue to multiply our ratepayers' contributions for many years to come. Uh, getting into just a few brass tacks, our assessment millage for fiscal year 2023, which would start July 1st, is estimated to be about 0.00122% of full market value. That's essentially what it is right now. Um, with new development in East Callow Hill, we'll be able to grow our uh, budget and our assessment revenue without significantly in increasing or uh, having an impact uh, to our current rate payers. The only major increase they would see um, in our bill would be because of the valuation change by OPA. Our projected income from assessment revenue is, uh, it will increase by $76,659 from our current budget. This plan dif differs from our first five years in several key aspects. In 2018, our street cleaning program is funded for two days a week. Uh, we've expanded that to six days a week. 
We have allocated more towards public safety, so we may engage private detail in response to an increase in need. Other services will include maintaining um, our recently installed planters, upkeep and expansion of community trash cans, monthly retail focused events, and retail recruitment and retention programs. To spread awareness of our reauthorization and take feedback on our proposed budget and plan, we held two virtual meetings, the recordings of which live on our website. Those meetings were promoted on our website through our biweekly newsletter. We sent a postcard to all property and business owners, inviting them to a third meeting earlier this month that covered the timeline and important information about our reauthorization. And this ordinance um, is also posted on our website. So in closing, it's been a great honor um, of mine to serve the community of Northern Liberties these past five years. And I look forward with your approval to serving them for more to come. So I thank you today for your time and consideration. And I am also happy to take questions. Thank you very much, Mr. William Reed. Okay, am I live there? Yes, you are live. Okay, great. Uh, good morning, Rules Committee and other attendees. Uh, thank you for inviting me to speak. Uh, my name is William Reed. I'm here to express strong support for the reauthorization of the Northern Liberties Business Improvement District. I'm very enthusiastic, <laughs> but uh, Christine just did such a great job in her testimony. I'm going to try to keep my comments brief. Uh, my perspective comes from serving on the board. I'm currently the bid chair. But I'm also uh, have been running uh, Standard Tap, a local business for over 20 years. And just as relevant, I'm a Northern Liberties resident and a father, and I've raised two kids in this neighborhood. The, the Northern Liberties bid has been instrumental in helping enhance the economic vitality of the area. I per personally witnessed the positive impact it has had on my business and others in the community. The bid provides valuable services. You're familiar with them, cleaning, marketing, promotional efforts, public safety initiatives. All these services fill in crucial gaps um, and they also amplify the impact of other these services. It creates a safer, more attractive and welcoming environment for both residents and visitors to our community. That's crucial to all of us in the business community. Newer businesses find valuable information and resources to help navigate Philadelphia's sometimes challenging regulatory environment. Um, this recent uh, uh, scare with the water quality and things like that. Having the bid around and that network really helps us regulate it and, and navigate and find relevant information and help. Um, in addition to these services, the bid also provides a platform for business owners to collaborate and work together toward common goals. Marketing vacant storefronts, increasing foot traffic, the festivals and farmers markets are good examples recently. Uh, the bid's efforts have helped to foster a sense of community and camaraderie among local business owners, and that's been invaluable um, facing the challenges of running a business in today's environment. I believe the reauthorization of the Northern Liberties bid is critical to maintaining the positive, positive momentum that has been established in the area. The bid's efforts have helped to create a thriving business district, and that benefits not only the businesses, but also the community as a whole. I urge you to support the reauthorization so that we can continue to build upon the progress that has been made. Thank you for your time and consideration. Thank you. Thank you very much. Any questions or comments from members of the committee? I'm hearing that. Thank um, all of the panelists for that enthusiastic Thank you. Um, support for the Northern uh, Liberties bid. And thank you very much for your presentation. If hearing no other questions from the committee, will the clerk please call the next bill and panelists? The next bill we, are, we will hear is uh, 220940, and we will have Dennis Murphy followed by Joanne Desper and followed by Chris Indergrat. Just please state your name for the record and begin your testimony. Good morning, Chairman Johnson and members of the Rules Committee. My name is Dennis Murphy. I'm a Deputy Director within the Commerce Department. I'm here to testify in support of Bill Number 220940, which would reauthorize the Roxboro Business Improvement District for an additional 10 years. The legislation includes their plan for services, and it would allow the bid to levy assessment fees on property owners within the districts to provide those services. 
The Roxborough bid was formed in 2003 to improve conditions and spur reinvestment along Ridge Avenue. Like many other Philadelphia commercial districts, the Roxborough district fell behind its suburban compet competitors to spark, despite all of its um, endowments, including charming architecture and strong neighborhood pride. Now, 20 years into its work, the Roxborough bid has capitalized on the corridor strengths and reversed its trajectory. Ridge Avenue is experiencing a construction boom and it's attracting residents and shoppers back into the city from neighboring suburbs. We recommend the Roxboro bid be reauthorized to maintain this pro positive momentum and benefit longtime property owners, business owners, and surrounding residents. The Roxboro bid has demonstrated a strong and meaningful commitment to community engagement throughout their reauthorization planning. They held several meetings to gather community and business owner input towards their 10 year plan. Commerce Department staff attended these meetings and reported merchant support for the bids track record and future plans. The Roxborough Business Improvement District provides a great example of the positive change that can be possible when neighborhood constituents lead, guide and implement services to improve their area. Thank you for the opportunity to testify today, and I'm happy to take any questions. Thank you very much. Any questions or comments from members of the committee? Hearing none, can the um, clerk call the next witness for this particular bill? Our next witness to speak is Joanne Dusper. Joanne, just state your name for the record and begin your testimony. Uh, good morning, Chairman Johnson and members of the Rules Committee. My name is Joanne Desper. Um, I am I have proudly served as the president of the Roxborough Development Corporation uh, board for five years. Um, I'm testifying uh, for bill number 220940. Um, I moved to Roxborough over 30 years ago and I joined my local civic association shortly thereafter. I've been active in community engagement since then, including a dozen years with the RDC, the Roxborough Development Corporation. In addition to our family home, my husband and I own a historic house on the ridge that was built in 1811. As a longtime resident, I remember um, before the Business Improvement District was created, there was more litter, more vacancies, fewer opportunities to meet neighbors at community events. It was hard for our district to be competitive with the retail corridors only a short distance away. Um, as a neighbor, I was happy to see the RDC begin to work revitalizing the community, um, which took huge strides forward by the creation of our bid two decades ago. Since then, the sidewalks have been cleaner, the business is more abundant, and the entire community is stronger and safer. RDC is the Neighborhood Improvement District Management Association for the, the Roxborough District. The Roxborough District is one of the 14 business improvement districts or bids in the city of Philadelphia and it serves the 2.5 mile Ridge Avenue commercial corridor, which extends from Main Street um, to just above Domino Lane. The district contains 465 properties, including both commercial or income producing properties and exempt single family houses and nonprofits. Most of the properties uh, front on Ridge Avenue with additional properties clustered around certain key intersections such as Schurz Lane, Leverington Avenue and Domino Lane. Today, the district offers a diverse mix of convenience, retail, restaurants, services, and entertainment venues frequented by the residents of Roxborough and other Northwest Philadelphia communities. It's also home to neighborhood anchor institutions such as Roxborough Memorial Hospital, the YMCA, and inner community action. Nearly 200 historic structures are scattered throughout the district and they're protected by the Ridge Avenue thematic historic district. Since 1992, the Roxborough Development Corporation's board volunteers and staffs have been working hard to enhance the Ridge Avenue commercial corridor. 
The Roxborough District was created in 2003, granting, granting the RDC the authority to assess property owners with a special property assessment fee to be used in accordance with the approved plan. The RDC uses its assessment fees to revitalize and maintain the Ridge Avenue commercial corridor. We organize special events, provide cleaning and beautification services, connect businesses to technical assistance and other resources, recruit new businesses, and market the corridor throughout the year. Our work benefits both the individual businesses and the Roxborough District as a whole. In preparation for the reauthorization, the RDC engaged with residents, businesses, and property owners starting in the summer of 2022. We've discussed the bid renew process, renewal process and solicited stakeholder input on the services we should provide. Our outreach included a corridor and community-wide survey and public meetings to solicit interest in a planning uh, committee, propose adjustments to property assessments with property and business owners and present our final plan before it was submitted to city council for review. In our survey and discussions, residents, businesses, and property owners within the district expressed satisfaction with our impact on the Ridge Avenue commercial corridor. They pointed to our work keeping the corridor clean and green and organizing festivals and other special events that now bring over 12,000 visitors to the Ridge each year. The projected revenue from our annual bid assessments is budgeted at $352,207 for fiscal year 2022-23. In addition to this revenue source, we more than double our revenue by applying and qualifying for grants, tax credits, and event sponsorships. For example, the RDC has secured a CDC tax credit partnership through the City of Philadelphia that provides us with $100,000 in revenue through a partnership with Penn Beer Distributors and MGMT Residential. This 10-year tax credit partnership will run through 2033. The need for strong commercial corridor stewardship has never been more critical. While the Roxborough District is recovering from the pandemic, 10% of its commercial space remains vacant. The RDC needs to continue its successful efforts to attract a larger share of Roxborough's 38,000 residents to the Ridge Avenue, Avenue Commercial Corridor. In addition, the RDC has the once in a generation opportunity to capture a new audience. The residents of the over 13, 1,200, I'm sorry, rented apart, rental apartments recently completed or under construction on Ridge Avenue. Reauthorization will enable the RDC to continue its important work revitalizing Ridge Avenue, providing property owners and businesses with commercial corridor services, improving the public realm, and offering Roxborough residents more local shopping, dining, and entertainment options. I am also pleased to submit letters of support today from several assessment payers, including Roxborough Memorial Hospital, the Galman Group, Throwbacks Bar and Grill, Fountain Street Auto Service, Studio Torres, and Friends of Gorgas Park. We appreciate the assistance provided by the Commerce Department and by Councilman Curtis Jones Jr. and his staff, and request your support in reauthorizing the Roxborough District. Thank you. Thank you very much. Any other questions or comments from members of the committee? I want to thank you for that great presentation regarding the Roxborough um, bid. You're welcome. With that being said, we are going to. We have Mr. one Chairman. more speaker. I think. One more speaker. OK, mm -hmm. is that Chris? In drink. Uh, yep. Yeah, let me just turn my camera on. Sure, Chris. Just state your name for the record, Chris, and your title, begin your testimony. Yep. Uh, good morning, Chairman Johnson and members of the Rules Committee. Uh, my name is Chris Endercat. I'm the co-owner of New Ridge Brewing Company. Um, my family is proud to have been a part of the Roxborough community for over 35 years. My brother, father, and I opened our business in the summer of 2020, uh, and we've been part of the Roxborough Business Improvement District ever since. 
Our brewery restaurant is located in the heart of the Ridge in Northwest Philadelphia's Roxborough neighborhood. Uh, we're dedicated to using the highest quality ingredients to make our beers on site in our seven barrel brew house. Between the restaurant, kitchen, and brewery, we currently employ around 35 people, the majority of which are from the Roxborough neighborhood. Um, we offer a seasonally rotating food menu featuring local and sustainable vendors and farms, along with a curated cocktail and wine list made up entirely of Pennsylvania wineries and distilleries. Our goal is to provide a unique and enjoyable experience for our customers while also supporting our local community and businesses. Um, one of the key features of our location is the Roxborough Pocket Park, which was developed by the Roxborough Development Corporation, the Neighborhood Improvement District Management Association. This beautiful park is located adjacent to our building and features color, color for murals and native plantings that provide a lovely view for our outdoor dining guests to enjoy. The Pocket Park serves as a neighborhood hub for families and events, a noticeable change from the vacant lot the park used to be when I was a child growing up in the neighborhood. The RDC has also hosted several street festivals that have featured our business as well as others along the commercial corridor, which has helped drive traffic, uh, foot traffic uh, and traffic in general to the area and support local business. <clears throat> as a small business owner in Roxborough, I can attest to the positive impact that the Business Improvement District has had on our community. The support and resources provided by the bid have helped us to navigate the challenges of starting a new business, uh, particularly during the pandemic. And we are grateful for their continued efforts to make our neighborhood a better place to live, work, and do business. Uh, the New Ridge Brewing family strongly supports the reauthorization of the Business Improvement District in Philadelphia and in Roxborough, and we urge the City Council to do the same. Uh, thank you for your time. Thank you very much. Any questions or comments from members of the committee? Okay, hearing none, uh, this is all of the bills that we have for um, this com particular committee. We will now conclude this hearing and go into a public meeting. Is anyone else here to testify whose name has not been called? And last, any questions or comments from members of this committee? Okay, we're going to ask for all of the witnesses and we thank you for your participation. Um, you can now disconnect from the hearing. And we will now conclude this hearing and go into the public meeting. We'll take a moment and give the tech team an opportunity to make that transition. Modesto, are we ready? Mr. Chair, we yes, we're ready to go. Uh, Mr. Chair, we don't have any public comment for today. Great. We will now convene the public meeting to consider the action that we can to be taken on the on the bills before this committee today. Will the clerk please call the roll to take attendance? Members that are in attendance will please indicate they are present when their names are called. Also, please say a few brief words when responding so that your image will be displayed on screen when you speak. Council Member Cindy Bass. Good morning, Mr. Chairman and colleagues. I am still present. Council Member Catherine Gilmer Richardson. Good morning, Mr. Chair and colleagues. I am present. Council Member Brian O'Neill. Present. And Vice Chair Mark Squilla. Vice Chair Mark Squilla, are you available? Vice Chair Mark Squill, are you available? Sorry, I don't know why I'm having a hard time unmuting myself. Okay, as long as you're here. I'm Thank here. You. Thank you. We will now go into our public meeting. The chair recognizes the gentleman from South Philadelphia, Councilman Mark Squill, for a motion on bill number 220940. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I move the bill number 220940 be reported from this committee with a favorable recommendation and further move that the rules of council be suspended as to permit the first reading of this bill at the next session of council. Second. 
The chair notes for the record that Councilman Brian O'Neill seconds the motion. It has been moved and properly seconded that Bill number 220940 be reported from this committee with the favorable recommendation and further move that the rules of council be suspended to permit first reading of this bill at the next session of council. All those in favor of the motion will signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, the ayes have it, and the motion carries. The chair recognizes Councilman Mark Squiller for a motion on bill number 2300007. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I move the bill number 2300007 be reported from this committee with a favorable recommendation and further move that the rules of council be suspended as to permit the first reading of this bill at the next session of council. Second. The chair notes for the record that Councilman Brian O'Neill seconds the motion. It has been moved and properly seconded that bill number 2300007 be reported from this committee with a favorable recommendation and further move that the rules of council be suspended to permit first reading of this bill at the next session of council. All those in favor of the motion will signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it and the motion carries. The chair recognizes Councilman Mark Squiller for a motion on bill number 230080. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I move. That bill number 230080 be reported from this committee with a favorable recommendation and further moves the rules of council be suspended. I submit the first reading of this bill at the next session of council. Second. The chair notes for the record that Councilman Mark Squiller seconds the note, seconds the motion. Brian O'Neill. I'm sorry. Mm. The chair notes for the record that Councilman Brian O'Neill, the gentleman, gentleman from Northeast Philadelphia, seconds the motion. It has been moved and properly seconded that Bill number 230080 be reported from this committee with a favorable recommendation and further move that the rules of council be suspended to permit first reading of this bill at the next session of council. All those in favor of the motion will signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, the ayes have it, and the motion carries. The chair recognizes Councilman Mark Squiller for a motion on bill number 230107. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I move the bill number 230107 be reported from this committee with a favorable recommendation and further move that rules of council be suspended and submit the first reading of this bill at the next session of council. Second. The chair notes for the record that Councilman Brian O'Neill Seconds the motion as we move and properly seconded that bill number 230107 be reported from this committee with the favorable recommendation and further move that the rules of council be suspended to permit first thing of this bill at the next session of council. All those in favor of the motion will send the Bible saying aye, aye, aye. aye. Opposed, the ayes have it, and the motion carries. Before we conclude, let the record reflect that bill number 230132 is being held at the request of the sponsor. If there are no additional remarks, this concludes the business before the Committee on Rules today. And I want to thank all of my colleagues for taking time out of your schedule and being here for this committee. Have a great day. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Have a good day. Thank you. Thank you.